There's a lot of conversation around MRI, specifically 3T MRI. So where does that come into play into staging? I would consider it an essential component of modern staging for anyone that wants to consider focal therapy. Uh, the uh, use of focal therapy is still considered investigational, but it does offer a pathway toward um, uh, cures without the same high risk of erectile dysfunction or impotence. MRI helps localize where the cancer is accurately and helps it confirm that the disease is unilateral, which uh, is a necessary basic component for anyone that wants to consider focal therapy. So on MRI reports, we get this report back. It says the word pyrads. What does pyrads mean when it comes to the tumor? So pyrads is for people that have uh, not had a biopsy that are in the screening process and for some years now, I've been advocating that people turn away from the old-fashioned random biopsy approach to diagnosing prostate cancer and go and obtain a, uh, a high-quality three-tesla multiparametric MRI. Comparative studies between biops, random biopsy and MRI show the MRI is more accurate. And of course, it's less invasive. It doesn't involve you know, a dozen sticks with a uh, needle into sensitive areas of the body. So uh, PIRADS is a way to uh, judge the malignant potential of a shadow seen in the MRI uh, that could be a cancer. So if there's been no biopsies, uh, uh, a spot seen on an MRI may or may not be a cancer. And the professionals that read these MRIs grade these spots from one to five, de depending on how likely they think it will be a clinically significant cancer. That means a Gleason 7 or higher cancer. Pyrads 1 and 2 mean that they don't think it's at all likely that the spot that the, that's being seen represents a cancer. Pyrads 4 and 5 uh, means that it's more likely than not that the spot is a cancer, that if you stick a needle in it, it'll be a uh, Gleason 7 or higher. And Pyrads 3 is sort of a fuzzy crossover number, which um, may suggest there's some small risk of it being a clinically significant cancer. So this is very useful in judging who needs a biopsy and who doesn't. Um, if the, if the um, multiparametric MRI has been done at a center of excellence, then the precision of the MRI is quite good, better than a biopsy. And arguably, people that would, don't have any lesions that are pyreds 3, 4, or 5, uh, these individuals can be watched instead of biopsy. There's been some concern expressed about the fact that even though MRIs are better than biopsy, they still can miss small uh, tumors occasionally and shouldn't patients go ahead and get a biopsy just to be safe? And I would argue that no, they should not do that, that they should have another MRI a year later to make sure that if there was a small lesion mist that is now growing, that it gets detected still at a curable stage. So you mentioned two types of imaging, MRI and PSMA. Are both necessary and in which order? So we use MRIs uh, prior to PSMA in patients that are uh, being faced with what to do about a high PSA. We use PSMA after patients have been diagnosed with prostate cancer to determine the extent of the disease, uh, whether it's unilateral or bilateral in the prostate, whether there's anything outside the prostate. So we've mentioned a lot of uh, staging tests. In which order should they go? Like somebody goes and gets a PSA, what's the next step after that? Right, so if the PSA is um, low and uh, reasonable for that man's age, uh, then I think just get another PSA in a year, you're done. If the PSA appears uh, to be out of range or elevated in any way, then the next step in, uh, in our practice is to get a three Tesla multiparametric MRI at a center of excellence. And if somebody wanted to avoid a biopsy altogether, can they get like a PSMA, their PSA, an MRI? Is there any genetic tests that they can do? We have a lot of people that even want to avoid targeted biopsies. Biopsies have become... Uh, uh, very safe if they're done in a limited way. They're a little uncomfortable, but um, I wouldn't argue against uh, doing a targeted biopsy. I haven't seen really any significant complications in five, six years uh, using that policy. The fears that the biopsies will spread cancer seem to be uh, unfounded, completely unfounded. So could you use a PSMA PET scan instead of a biopsy? In theory, you could. Uh, PSMA PET scans are pretty accurate, and if a suspicious spot lighting up on MRI doesn't light up on PSMA, that would be a strong argument that that spot isn't cancer. Insurance companies aren't paying for PSMA unless you have a diagnosis of cancer, but if, uh, if the uh, financial concerns are uh, 
uh, irrelevant, then one could consider, I suppose, doing a PSMA PET scan, although it's a little, little outside the box, uh, considering that uh, if you are diagnosed, you do need to know the Gleason score. A PSMA PET scan that shows a hot spot doesn't tell us what the Gleason score would be, and you would want to know that information before treatment. So you still end up needing a biopsy. But uh, for the individual in whom the PSMA PET scan doesn't show anything, uh, that is conceivably an approach. PSMA PET scans are not perfect. About 10% of prostate cancers don't light up with PSMA. So they're very good, but they're not perfect. Thanks so much for watching. If you would like more information about prostate cancer and all sorts of education, you can visit our website, pcri.org, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with new prostate cancer education videos every week. Thank you.